This is part two on the OS2 project on the Compaq Armada 1592DT, which is now resting here on the floor instead of there. Very interesting. No, it's not. These are a bunch of floppy disks I ordered. <laughs> it only cost me a freaking three euros. <laughs> That's including shipping, really. That includes shipping, seriously. Ten floppy disks right here. I'll just take one out to show you what these disks are all about. Just a regular, I uh, think they're even IBM formatted. Wow. Just a regular run of the mill 1.44 meg high density floppy disks. Nothing special about them. They're pretty hard to find in actually, actually when they're new. Trust me. I just wanted ones that are most certainly not damaged and not corrupted. Because I do have a floppy disk laying around. Yes, one floppy disk. That's this one over here. This is also a high density disk. But like I said, the center sector is actually gone. So I can't write anything past 700k approximately. That will just ruin it. And it will just say can't read or can't write. And that's a bit of a problem because there is no real way of getting drivers on that compact over there without using floppies because they're all a bunch of soft packs that require you to use a floppy to copy the files from your floppy to your hard drive and then copy them back to an installation floppy yes it's floppyception that's the way it used to go at compact you get it you just get your soft pack you extract it to your hard drive then you run it again and it will format your floppy and make it an install floppy for the software. It doesn't unpack the actual software directly to your disk so you can use the drivers or the software. It has to make an install disk for you in the old soft packs. Luckily that has changed. The later drivers do support regular uh, direction, you know, execution from the exe files. But the old ones do not and that's a shame. So I've had a lot of hassles getting an operating system to run stably on that thing. I used to, you know, put Windows 98 on it and a USB flash storage driver through uh, infrared from my Toshiba Satellite Pro over here. That was a hassle too. And I'm like, yeah, I don't really give a shit. And I'm just, you know, decided to toss this one out and just use these Fujifilm discs. Which are all 1.44 megs. They're all the same freaking discs. I've got a whole bunch of them now to use. At least will keep me comfortable for the couple of years to come. And I can also use them on other floppy drive devices if I ever desire to do so. For instance, if I would need to do a BIOS update on, for instance, this thing over here, which does not support... Sorry about that. Which does not support uh, Windows or flash drive flashing from the BIOS. It is very satisfying, though, to push a floppy drive in there and push it out again. I know how to push their buttons, that's me, <laughs> let me tell you that. <laughs> I love these lame puns. But not everyone does. So this will, this floppy will just be my dust cover for the floppy drive in this thing. This is one of the last floppy drives that I still have running in desktop machines at least, that still works. This one is actually connected and working. But yeah, I am uh, kind of... Uh, I'm kind of digressing here. So here is the Compaq Armada 1592 that I'm going to put OS2 on like I announced in a previous video. And this, uh, these are the disks that I'm going to be using to make the boot uh, floppy so I can boot the whole thing. So without further ado, let's just end this video because <laughs> all I need to do next is just get myself a second CD so I can burn the images for OS2 4.5 and then we'll, we're all set. I'm not going to make a separate video on that, but I just wanted to make a video about these floppies as well. Because they're pretty darn awesome. And they work fine. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I thank you for watching. Take a good look at that. Floppies. Yeah. Floppies.